Welcome back, this is News Extra. Now, the Norfolk Broads helps bring millions of tourists to our county and is thought to be worth around £600 million to our local area. But now the Broads Authority, who of course look after the area, are now wanting our thoughts on the Broads Plan 2017. That sets out a long-term vision for the area, covering all kinds of subjects, but ultimately to make things better for the environment, for local communities and for visitors too. So what exactly is in this plan? Why do we need one? And how can you get involved? Well, tonight I'm joined by Andrea Long, the Director of Planning and Resources at the Broads Authority. Good evening, Andrea. Good evening. Now, this plan is huge, and I have a bit of paper here for a reason. <laughs> um, it's about managing water resources, it's flood risk, it's biodiversity, it's agriculture, navigation, landscape character, historic environment, climate change, recreational experiences, connecting and inspiring people, raising awareness of the Broads, or anything else which is important to them. That is quite a big remit for this plan. It, it sounds huge. Is this a big project? It is a big project. It's something that we only do every five years, but effectively it's a plan for the Broads, not just the Broads Authority. So it's all of the organisations and groups that are at work in the Broads. What are they going to be doing over the next five years? And that's what this plan is about, is capturing that collective effort that's going to be happening in, in the broads in the next five years. Because there's so many different parts to that. It, it isn't just a tourist experience. It isn't just a, uh, an area of, of, of natural beauty. It, it, there's so many different parts to it. Does that make it quite a challenge to actually bring all those threads together? It is, and that's why it's a partnership plan. It's a it's sort of collective responsibility of, of all the organisations and, and, and people that are involved in it. And, and they're all very, very diverse interests. And so it's trying to sort of coordinate all of that particular effort that, w that will be happening over that particular period uh, in order to, to, to make sure that we're maximising um, the opportunities that we have for people to understand the special qualities. So it's not aimed just at visitors, just at tourists. It's aimed at local people, communities, various organisations, landowners, so everybody can be involved or have their say on what's happening. Because it is quite a chunky document, um, as I'm sure you yes. know. <laughs> Let's pick out some of the key bits from it. What, what things are in it that are being suggested about doing things differently to how they're done now? I think one of the key things that we'll be looking at over the next five years is the issue around climate change. We've got an event that's happening later this week uh, where we're working very closely with the Environment Agency looking at what may be happening in terms of coastal defences uh, over the next five years and clearly beyond. Uh, so that's going to be some, a you know, big piece of work that we need to be looking at as part of this process as well. So that's one of the big things. I think the changes um, that will be happening as part of Brexit and how that affects land management, farming, agricultural payments, that's again is something that is going to be different in this plan, although we won't know what all of the answers to that would be at this stage, but hopefully we will do as, as this consultation progresses. Because I think a lot of people maybe wouldn't have actually linked the two, Brexit with, with the Broads, but mm. what kind of things are actually being considered there specifically? Well I think you know, the Broads is, is, a, is a, an important landscape, it's a farmed lan landscape and therefore anything that happens in terms of um, payments to farmers, uh, as, you know, because obviously clearly at the moment they do uh, have payments uh, you know, from Europe, what's going to happen with that in the future? But also you've got, the, the Broads is known for its special environmental qualities and a lot of the legislation that looks after the Broads is, is from European legislation, so clearly there is... Uh, going to be some interesting uh, things that we need to be thinking about, about how we make sure that the special qualities of the broads, the landscape, the wildlife, uh, the water quality is protected over the next five years. Now tourism we've already touched on mm. briefly but it is a, a big part of, of, the, of the effort there. Um, how, how much tourism type input is in, in this plan? A, a huge amount actually as you see, see through the plan and, and what we've tried to do is not just lump uh, tourism just in one place, it flows throughout the plan, as, as do all of the themes um, really. But I think one of the things we're looking at particularly, we've refreshed our tourism strategy relatively recently, we've got a big um, marketing uh, ploy that we're looking at, particularly because we're looking at the Broads National Park as the branding. Um, we're looking at ways of encouraging young people to, to visit the area, because a lot of people who, who talk to us about why they come to the area, they first came as children 
and they had an experience then and that's why they've come back and so it's trying to encourage children to visit the bring their parents so we try and capture them through school so that this is sort of local children as well as people from further apart so well let's find out a little bit more about that strategy because mm. uh, earlier on in the summer that strategy was uh, unveiled about bringing younger people to the broads and uh, making a holiday enjoying themselves let's find out some more about that a picture perfect day on the norfolk broads packed with families enjoying the sunshine in the last precious moments of the summer holidays. The busy season may be coming to an end, but now a plan has been launched to make sure the crowds don't just come back, but grow over the next five years. And with most visitors currently over the age of 45, Bruce Hansen from the Broads Authority says it's the tech-savvy tourists in their 20s and 30s they want to target, with an updated website and increased social media presence. There's always something that we can do better, but uh, you can have all the fancy marketing campaigns in the world, but if you don't have the product right in the first place, it's all for nothing, because people notice what you've got, therefore we've all got to pull together and make sure that everything is perfect, and it's this message that we're not competing. You might have a similar kind of business to the one down the road, but we're not competing with the one down the road. We're competing with the Lake District or Cornwall or somewhere else. That's a really important message to get out to our businesses. The Sustainable Tourism in the Broads report lists six priorities to focus on up to 2020, including developing wildlife experiences and improving tourist information. But it also highlights the growing popularity of alternate activities, particularly on land. Boating will always be at the heart of the Broads product. I, I can't imagine a day when it won't be. It's the centre, it's what most people think about the Broads. Um, but people are more, more and more they're getting to understand the fact that there's, it's fantastic walking country. You know, we don't do mountains here, but you don't need them. But this move away from the traditional doesn't mean it's at the expense of established boating businesses. At Herbert Woods in Potter Heigham, they've seen bookings increase every year for the last four years and are already up for next year. But Amanda Walker from there says there's still areas for improvement creating awareness of the broads um, nationally and internationally. We're very good at promoting ourselves locally, um, but not outside of the area. Um, internet and mobile connections, that is a huge, a huge thing for us. Uh, we get a lot of customers asking if internet is available. Um, and it also gives you a lot of scope for promotion through social media, so people can go out on the boats, they can tweet photos, they can Facebook photos, and then that automatically reaches all their friends, and they're like, oh, it looks amazing, let's go there next year. So with the joining of the historic broads and modern technology, it's hoped this latest tourism push will stop one of Norfolk's treasured landscapes getting stuck in the past. Amy Blunt, Mustard TV, the Norfolk Broads. So that's the latest tourism plan that the Royal Authority have been putting out. But let's, let's move on to what the uptake's been like on this plan so far, the numbers of people who have actually been getting involved. It's been, been running a couple of weeks. Have you been encouraged by the numbers so far, the number of responses? I think we have. We've had lots of people asking questions about how they can get involved and what are the kinds of things that responses that we want. And I think that the message that we would say is if you've got a, a, any views and you're not sure um, whether that's something that we... But we want to hear them and I think that's the, th the thing that we would push as being the most important. We've had quite a lot of people asking us questions. This is our second consultation. We had one earlier in the year between February and April and the response to that was good. So I think we're really pleased that we've been able to take on board the comments that we've had so far and, and the contributions that we've had from a wide range of, of, of people, organisations, local communities. Um, so we're hoping that the, this revised plan will um, have picked up most of the things that people had originally made. So it would be useful to know from people who contributed last time, is this what they, you know, are we responding in the way that they thought that we would? Yeah, so for the people who might respond to a uh, website message board, get involved, they're the sort of people you want to hear from. Absolutely, so, yeah. yes. Andrea, thank you very much indeed. That is all the time we have for this evening. As ever, you can always join the conversation on Twitter. We're at Mustard TV. The usual hashtag is News Extra. And if you are wanting to share your thoughts with the Broads Authority, they're very keen to hear from you. All the details you need are on screen now. Business Extra at the same time tomorrow night. But for now, my thanks to Andrea for her time and to you for watching. Have a very good night.